Alright, so today I'm going to show you how to solve an RC circuit problem. Now, first hand off the bat, I have to apologize. Um, I'm using my webcam to film this, so it, it kind of sucks. Um, but, <clears throat> here, let me draw the circuit. Okay, so this is actually from Smart Physics, so if you go to U of I or uh, College of DuPage, any community college that uses U of I's format, uh, UIUC, um, whatever, it, it's going to use Smart Physics. So. I'm going to draw the circuit that they provided. It's one of the uh, interactive examples, but uh, I figure it's good study material anyways if you want to just like learn how to do it. And you'll have to excuse me because I am shitty at drawing. Yeah, see, look at that. I almost ran out of space. Dumb as a brick. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Okay. So, right here, we got this circuit. And this, these three are resistors, and these two are capacitors. Here's a battery right over here. So, this is going to be 12 volts, right? <clears throat> and this one here is going to be 110 volts. And this guy here is going to be 220 and this one here is going to be 330. And then we have two capacitors, and this is going to be 40 microcoulombs, so that's going to be 40 E negative 6, and this one's going to be 80 microcoulombs, so that's 80 E negative 6. All right. <clears throat> so the object of this is we're going to solve for the charge on this capacitor, right? So we're going to call this Q1. And this is going to be... Er, I'm sorry, C1, and uh, this is C2. So, solve for charge on C2, or Q2. Oh, there's, there's also a switch here. I'm sorry. Okay, so after a very long time, after the switch is closed, solve for the charge on, key, on capacitor 2, which is this one. A long time charging. So, um, what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna first uh, write down some equations that we use. Um, so we first got uh, uh, the voltage of a capacitor. Voltage drop across a capacitor is equal to the charge over its capacitance, right? And then one that you're all familiar with is V equals I R. So, we got those two down. And then, how do we go about solving for the charge on C2? Well, let's see. We're going to have to know the voltage drop across it. Or, not really, but kind of. We're going to have to use the equation using this. Because that's the only way that we're going to get to Q over here. So, how do we do that? Well, let's see. Let's use... Kirchhoff circuit rules, right? So, you know, we're going to have, before I actually ignore that, I didn't draw a loop yet, we're going to have two loops, but first we're going to label our, cir our uh, current, right? So this is going to be I1, right? Because it flows out of the battery. And then we're going to have current flowing into here, into this one. We're going to call that I2. And then it's going to also split off and go into here, and that's going to be I3. So, and we know that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. <clears throat> so we're going to choose two loops. We're going to choose this loop, and we're going to label that A, subset A, and we're going to label this set B, not subset, set. Okay. And then, yeah, okay. So, let's go around and do Kirchhoff circuit rules. All right, so A is going to be, uh, we're gonna go 12, because we're going in the direction of the current with the battery, so that's a voltage gain. Drop across 110 ohm resistor I1, minus 220 I2, uh, equals zero. All right, then we're gonna get B, Bam. All right. 
we're gonna get B. This is gonna be, we're gonna start through down here. So we're gonna get B is gonna be, since this is moving, the loop is moving in the opposite direction of the current, across this volt, across this uh, resistor, we're going to get a voltage gain. And then, so it's gonna be plus 220, I2. And then, since we're moving in the direction of the current and the loop, uh, with the loop, um, we're gonna get a voltage drop across this capacitor. So it's gonna be Q1, this, this formula, Vc equals Q over C. Uh, so we're getting Q1 over the capacitance of this. And then we're gonna get a voltage drop across this resistor. All right, so that's gonna be 330 I3. Again, because we're moving in the direction of the loop with the current. Um, and then we're gonna get another voltage drop across uh, this capacitor, which is gonna be Q2 over 80 E negative six equals zero. Now, after, so we're talking about when the situation when the switch is closed, right? After a really long time. So this switch is actually closed right now. So I'm just gonna, whatever. Uh, this is closed. <laughs> And it's been a really long time, so we can. And when I say a really long time, it means it goes to infinity. So what we're going to get after a really long time, these capacitors are going to be fully charged, right? So I three is going to go to zero. So after a long time, I three goes to zero. Or another way, if you like math and you hate yourself or something, you can, uh, <laughs> I'm joking, math is great. Uh, limit as, uh, as t goes to infinity of uh, i3 is equal to zero, right? So, and then also because, so let's go back to this equation then, right? Because this is gonna change this equation up here. Because I1, is equal to I2 plus I3. So, we're going to move that, and it's going to become I1 is equal to I2 plus 0. So, I1 is equal to I2. <laughs> well, surely this has got to have quite a bit of implications for the rest of the circuit, right? Yeah, it does. So, um, we're going to rewrite our equations that we got up here, right? So we're gonna write, um, we're gonna rewrite it, loop A first. So A is going to be 12 volts again, minus 110 I1. But now since this is, I2 is equal to I1, we're gonna write negative 220 I1 is equal to zero. And then we get that that is equal to 12 uh, minus 330 I1 is equal to zero, and then we get that I1 is equal to two over 55. That, that's just, we just move that over and divide it that, you know, algebra, whatever. Um, so that's two over 55 amps, right? All right, so we got that. Now we're gonna go, go to B, right? <clears throat> so we're gonna get this first one is equal to uh, we're, get, we're just going to still have this uh, equal to I2, so... Or no, let's just set it equal to I1, actually. So this is going to be 220 I1. And then we're going to subtract... Oh, wait a second. I forgot to tell you something. Q1 is equal to Q2, because these capacitors are connected in series. So, when capacitors are in a series, they must share the same charge. Right? We know that. So, we're going to have Q1 is actually equal to Q2. Whoops. <laughs> See, I'm not very good at that. Okay, so Q1 is actually equal to Q2 because they are connected in series, right? So, we're going to get Q1 over 40, uh, 40E negative 6. Minus, well, I2, I3 is now 0, so that's just going to be 0. Minus Q1, remember, Q1 is equal to Q2. Uh, 80 E negative 6 
equals zero. Okay. So what do we have left to do? Well, I guess I should have made this Q1 equal to Q2. So I'm just going to change that Q2. So what do we do now? We solve for Q2. Right, so we can move these over to the other side. So we're going to do, we're going to drop this equation down, right? This whole thing. And we're going to do uh, 220 I1 is equal to uh, uh, Q2 over 40 E negative 6 plus Q2 over 80 uh, e negative 6. So we could just multiply that by 2, or get a uh, common denominator. So we're going to multiply both top and bottom by 2. And we're going to get that is also equal to 3q2 over 80e negative 6. Right. So we're going to get 220 times I1, which is 2 over 55, so 2 over 55, which is then equal to 3Q2 over 80E negative 6. And we can rearrange this equation, you know, do fancy tricks, whatever, to do algebra and stuff, whatnot. I guess not really that fancy, it's just basic algebra. We get Q2 is then equal to... Um, let me just enter this, and I can't do that by hand. Uh, okay, zero point zero 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 two one three uh, coulombs. So that's going to be our answer. And if I type that in, let me just check. Zero 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 two one three. Enter. All right, and shows that the answer is indeed correct. So, um, if you want me to redo this video because it sucks, please tell me. Or if you have any questions, please ask. I will tell you. Uh, I will help. I will try to help. If you can't read my handwriting, tell me. Or if it's a problem, tell me because I will improve it next video and I will be better. Alright, thank you for watching.